Welcome back to the Pillarworks channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this 10 foot by 4 foot dining table. It seats about 14 people and is heavy. Alright, so to get started, I'm rough cutting my 8 quarter ash for the leg blanks. Each leg is going to have two pieces of ash that go together to make about a 3.5 inch square leg. I'm also going to rough cut the tabletop pieces because the tabletop is made of 10 pieces that are 4 feet by 1 foot. And after that, I'm just going to get the rest of the milling done. The material for these legs were a little bit too wide for what I needed, so I took them to the bandsaw to get trimmed down to about 3.75 to 4 inches wide. After that, I took it to the joiner and the planer to get it milled down even further. I didn't bother jointing any of the edges because I would have to rejoint it after the glue dried anyway. For a glue up like this that ranges from 20 to 35 inches long, I like to use about 10 clamps, 5 on the bottom and 5 on top. And this is also a good opportunity to hide any knots or imperfections. Just put them on the inside of the face and you should be good to go. While those leg blanks are drying, I can get started on the tabletop pieces. This isn't going to be a traditional tabletop that runs the length of the table. In fact, it'll be the opposite. I'm going to have 10 pieces that are 1 foot by 4 foot in dimension, and they're going to run across the width of the table. So combined, they'll give me the 10 foot length that I need, but it'll be a little bit easier for me to work with. And I'm just skip planing these. Some of the boards were a little bit wider than my jointer, so I didn't bother jointing them. After I get them laminated, I'll be able to joint them on the planer. I had 20 pieces that ranged from 5 to 8 inches in width, and here I'm just pairing them up, making sure that the grain looks nice together and that they add up to a width that's over 12 inches. Most of these were between 13 and 14 inches wide. And my joiner wasn't giving me a reliable edge, and so I used my track saw that I recently got. This is one of the first times I was using it. I was using it here to give me a nice jointed edge so that when I glued them up, there was no gaps. I got each of these pieces trimmed down to about 12 and a half inches wide so that they would fit in my planer. And because I skip planed them, they weren't flat, so they had a little bit of a rock to them. So I put them on top of a sacrificial board, and this will be a little sled that I run to the planer. That wedge keeps everything flat and stable. I also added a cleat to the front so that it wouldn't slide back or forward. And I just ran each of these through the planer until I got a nice flat face. After that, I could flip it over and use that new reference face on the bottom. Planning these down was a pretty grueling task because these boards are very heavy. The sped up video doesn't make it look too tiring, but after a couple rounds of getting these down to a nice flat piece, uh, I was pretty exhausted.
Those pieces you just saw me resaw and plane down were for this long stretcher. They have to be about 110 inches long, which is a pretty long piece to work with. So it was easier for me to work with a shorter piece and then half lap it together. I also thought that that was easier for me to make sure that it was flat and had a nice straight edge on it. After I got both those long stretchers glued up, I could plane them down till everything was flush. I think these were planed down to about 7 eighths of an inch thick, maybe a little bit lighter than that. Now I could take the opportunity to cut this stretcher down to its final width, which is about three and a half inches wide. Off camera, I also got the short cross stretchers milled up. Two of them are for the short side leg assembly, and then there are five more for the cross support pieces. This is the type of project where a miter saw can come in very handy. You can make a lot of cuts on a crosscut sled and they'll be reliable, but something that's nine feet long, you're not gonna get a nice reliable cut. So I made sure to clamp these pieces up so that they were identical when I cut them. I wasn't 100% concerned with how long the final pieces were, just as long as they were identical. While I was at the miter saw, I took the opportunity to cut the cross stretchers to their final length, as well as the leg blanks. After that, I can get started on the joinery. I decided to use dowels to connect the stretchers to the legs, and each connection is going to have five three-inch dowels holding it in place. And I have the three-eighths inch spacer installed here, and this will make sure that the stretcher is inset three-eighths of an inch from the leg. After drilling all the holes for the legs, I could move on to the stretchers. The short stretchers weren't too difficult because they could fit into my vise without issue. On the other hand, the long stretchers were a little annoying to drill because the pieces were so long. I had to lay them on my bench and get into this awkward position to drill the holes. And a side note, this crazy Florida winter had me wearing long sleeves. It was in the 60s this day and I, I couldn't handle it. This was the first dry fit I did of the table base, and here I'm just putting the cross stretchers across just to make sure that they're the right size. This is a bit of a sanity check to make sure I haven't made any drastic mistakes, which I hadn't to this point, so so far so good. The cross stretchers receive a half lap on either side. The spacing on these was critical because it ensured that the long stretchers were brought into square. So this is a test piece that I'm using and I'll bring it over to my table base to make sure that it fits. I snuck up on this and you can see here that it's off by a little bit. So I'll go back and inch my fence over and make another pass. After a few tests, I had the fit right where I wanted it. And what I'm referring to is the distance between the inside of each of these cuts. I'll work on the thickness of the cuts afterwards. After I got all of the half laps cut in the cross stretchers, I could do a quick test fit to make sure everything fit nicely so far. After that, I could move on to cutting the half laps for the long stretchers, 
And I made sure to do a gain cut for these again so that the half laps were aligned perfectly. It was really critical to make sure that these were aligned because this would keep the cross stretchers square. I would set my fence to about 17 to 18 inches, whatever the measurement was to make sure that these were evenly spaced. I would make my cut, flip the board around and cut the other end, and then I could adjust my fence so that I could move to the half laps that are more towards the middle of the board. Because of how close I cut the half lap to the end of this board and the grain direction that's going on here, this little part that I'm drilling through is a pretty weak spot and would be prone to getting kicked off. These little ones here are brackets that are going to go on the short sides and it's just going to be a faux brace just to continue the look on each side. But I'm just hitting some dowels through to reinforce the pieces and I'll come back and trim them later. Before gluing up the short side assembly, I added a chamfer to the inside corner of each leg. And this was going to give me a surface to drill through for the corner braces. And I also added an eighth inch round over to every edge on the table. And now I could glue up the short side assemblies. This is a pretty simple glue up. I just had to make sure that I kept the legs square after everything was clamped up. Having five dowels on each side provides a lot of strength, though it can be somewhat difficult to get everything fully seated with that many dowels, especially having that little padded mat underneath the leg. So I use these two pipe clamps to get everything fully seated. I just would do a partial turn for each clamp back and forth to make sure nothing racked. After that I could test for square and move on to the next step. I wanted to add a little bit more strength to the table, so I'm adding these pieces to the inside of the long stretchers. I'm just using some brad nails and glue, and then I'll come back with some clamps to tighten them up. This creates a bit of a faux dado for the cross stretchers to fit in, and you can see that little groove at the top of each piece, and that's how I'm going to secure the tabletop pieces. With such a long span between the table legs, I wanted to add some additional support to prevent the table from sagging in the middle. So I created this fifth leg, and I'm just cutting the joint here so that it can slip under the middle cross stretcher. These corner braces make a huge difference in terms of the strength of the table. It really tightens everything up. So first I'm securing them to the side pieces, and then I'll pre-drill for my lag screws, and then drive the lag screws in. You can't see it quite from these angles, but it really tightens up the skirts into the leg. And now it's time for stain and finish. It's really important to make sure you apply the right color that your customer chose. You can see in a couple seconds I realized that I applied the wrong color. It was kind of frustrating. I had to go take a walk because I thought I had ruined everything. But after I put the correct color over this one, you couldn't tell the difference between the 10 pieces. And here's the correct stain. I think it's a golden oak color. I like to apply a relatively heavy coat and I apply it with the grain and then I'll come back with a clean paper towel and wipe it completely dry with the grain as well. It's really critical to remove the excess stain with the grain or else you'll have streaks that you'll see later on. I created this little drying rack system for all the pieces. Having these 10 pieces, it was going to be difficult to store everything while they dried, but this solution worked out pretty well. 
I ended up going with a water-based polyurethane because I wanted something that would dry quickly but still be pretty durable. The top pieces received four or five coats and I make sure to apply relatively light coats and then let them dry and I'll come back with a worn out 220 piece of sandpaper, sand it back and then wipe off the excess dust and then apply the next coat. And that about wraps this one up. This table is pretty easy to transport and the installation isn't too bad. I think the most difficult part is getting the long stretchers to fully seat in the short side assemblies and attaching the tabletop. There's just a lot of fasteners to screw down and get them lined up correctly. But overall it wasn't too bad. Thanks for watching.